Part 2, The Wanderings of Odysseus, Episode 5, The Lotus Eaters. The time is 10am, although, again, it's probably more like 9.45. The scene is the bath, or rather, in the, in the case of the uh, chapter, it takes place in various places along Westland Row and Lincoln Place, practically the opposite end of the uh, city through the river. The colour is brown, the technique is narcissism, and correspondences include Bloom as Ulysses, Nausicaa, Aerolocus, Bather, and Communicants. Science or art, again we have divergence, chemistry and botany. The meaning is the seduction of faith. The organ, are the skin and genitals, the symbols in this chapter are the host, the penis, flower and drugs. Other characters who show up include C.P. McCoy, Martha, Father Conmey, and Bantam Lyons. By lorries along Sir John Rogerson's Quay, Mr. Bloom walked soberly past Windmill Lane, Leesk's the Linseed Crusher, the Postal Telegraph Office. Bloom walks elliptically into the city and onto the south side, uh, on his way to the post office on Westland Row. This is by no means the closest post office to him. Here he picks up a letter left in the care of the office for Henry Flower, Esquire. Flower? Bloom. Before we get to see what is the matter of the letter, Bloom bumps into C.P. McCoy, another refugee from Dubliners who awkwardly asks what time Paddy Dignam's funeral is at, but not before awkwardly inquiring as to Bloom's well-being and that of his wife's. He knows that something is afoot with Boylan. Before they depart, McCoy solicits Bloom to note him in attendance at the funeral, although he reckons that it may, may not be there. After walking in a geographical circle, Bloom finds a quiet spot to read the letter. He is a secret female pen friend, Martha, and this is a suggestive letter from her. He passes a Catholic service on which he dwells on his way to Sweeney's chemist, where he buys a bar of lemon scented soap. At his elbow, Bantam Lines is looking for the newspaper and for a tip for the races. Bloom gives it to him, saying that he was going to throw it away later. Lines takes this as a tip for a horse called Throw It Away and returns the newspaper. Bloom contemplates having a Turkish bath. McCoy, get rid of him quickly. Take me out of my way. Hey, company, when you... Hello, Bloom. Where are you after? Hello, McCoy. Nowhere in particular. How's the body? Fine. How are you? Just keeping alive, McCoy said. His eyes on the black tie and clothes, he asked with low respect. Is there any... No trouble, I hope. I see your... Oh, no, Mr. Bloom said. Poor Dignam, you know. The funeral is today. To be sure, poor fellow, so it is. What time? A photo it isn't. A badge, maybe? Eleven, Mr. Bloom answered. Oh, how I long to meet you, Henry, dear. Do not deny my request before my patients are exhausted. Then I will tell you all. Goodbye now, naughty darling. I have such a bad headache today, and write by return to your longing, Martha. P.S. Do tell me what kind of perfume does your wife use? I want to know. He rustled the pleated papers, jerking his chin on his high collar. Barber's itch. Tight collar, he'll lose his hair. Better leave him the paper and get shut of him. You can keep it, Mr. Bloom said. Ascot, gold cup, white, Bantam Lyons muttered. Half a mo, maximum the second. I was just going to throw it away, Mr. Bloom said. Bantam Lyons raised his eyes suddenly and leered weakly. What's that? his sharp voice said. I say you can keep it, Mr. Bloom asked. I was going to throw it away that moment. Bantam Lyons doubted an instant, leering, then thrust the outspread sheets back on Mr. Bloom's arms. I'll risk it, he said. Here, thanks. He sped off towards Conway's corner. Godspeed, Scott. Bloom isn't exactly a saint either with his saucy letters. We could argue whether he is in truth any more or less faithful than Molly, but that isn't what this is about. The book is about human beings' flaws, but their innate truth being a redemption for them. Stephen, in spite of himself, can be redeemed, as can Bloom, 
and as is Molly at the end of the book. My quote from the previous chapter of Metempsychosis is important. The transmigration of souls is part of the matter of the novel. Let's take a moment to look at Bloom's tastes. Throughout, he is identified with an interest in the rear end, from watching hips swaying and what that implies of the next door girl in blue gaxes, to his interest in kidneys, suggested as a food from that region. He also, like Joyce, sends dorky letters, so Martha suggests in her response. There's probably more than one reason that he tears the letter up. And there are plenty of suggestions that he is what we t would today call a sub. But I think it goes too far to reflect to suggest that he is pleased to be a cuckold. But perhaps it is fair to say that he is resigned to it. If we take it that the text is a fair reflection of his thoughts, he avoids dwelling on the matter as far as possible, perhaps in defiance of free how frequently it is loosely brought up. Henry Gibson says something to the effect that if you rob a man of his everyday lie, you rob him of his happiness. Bloom is doing his best to avoid betraying his own innocence. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah.